Welcome SEO survivors to Weekly Integral Factor. Juicy news this week with not only a gorgeous birthday banner but also a goddesses banner along with a whole lot of freebies as 5.5 anniversary celebrations kick off. All of that and more after Weekly if sponsor my own channel merch at my Teespring page. A lot of cool shorts, hoodie, stickers like Lens Squad are available and you can even get a poster of the key visual we made for our SAO The First Day trailer project. Do check him out and support the channel. Also, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to not miss future content. I have a lot of stuff lined up ranging from multiple new Sword Online series being announced to a potential Unite Ring game being on the horizon, as well as multiple dozen Q&A videos answering your questions. So subscribe and stay tuned for all of that. But without further ado, we'll start with what's already in the game as of now. First and foremost, not only a blessing for new players, but also a favorite of the veterans who are too lazy to grind XP. Heapin 20 million XP event is back. It's a daily unlocking XP dungeon that will grant you significantly escalating XP rewards each time and at the end you'll have accumulated a heapin 20 million XP. You don't need to log in daily, you can just do them all in one go after a couple days of course once they all unlock, but there are more reasons to log in daily. There's currently a daily free 11 times pull campaign going on, so you absolutely should log in daily even if you're not doing the daily missions, that's a lot of daily words being thrown out. Just log in, grab your free pool, it does not cost you anything and a huge chance you'll get nice 4 star skills out of it, again for free. And later this week, its theming will be switching from the strategy meeting to 5.5 anniversary celebrations, so plenty more free daily pulls are on the horizon, do not miss out on them. Double experience from subquests is now live, which is quite the great timing for me, as I tasked myself with completing all the subquests, started the journey yesterday, and now I can continue while benefiting from double XP. For those unsure, subquests are those random NPC quests available on every single floor, so if you feel like grinding some XP, there's a good chance utilizing those quests. Ring production campaign is live where the cost of producing them are halved and their sources have increased drops. You guys also have been very helpful lately when I had questions so feel free to tell me whether rings are worth it or not for a relatively casual player. I did check the weapon ingot thingies way back when and their pros and cons limited me so much that I never bothered with them. If rings are not like that, I may actually use this chance to grind a bit. Chaos Showdown rotation is here for the Chaos Armor you need beyond level 100. I have a separate video planned for newbies regarding Chaos Armor but the gist of it is if you're over level 100 you need to farm Chaos Dungeon to craft better armor that's now fitting you. It is available in the Black Iron Palace, here's the current available bosses and their weaknesses. You can farm them with parties up to the level 135 version. Kada Hunt event received its final rewards update, this is that last insignificant update for heavy grinders to use their remaining materials on, nothing special there, but here is a list of all the added items just in case you wanna check. Now time for future content coming later this week. I said the free 11 pool banner will be switching its theme from SAO game strategy meeting to 5.5 anniversary, but in addition to that, when that happens we're getting a free avatar pool as well, so make sure to check the avatar orders too when that happens. For those new players, avatar items are basically transmog slash skin items, you can put these over your existing slots to change your appearance. And now, the gacha. We have the birthday of Edith Synthesis 10 arriving soon. On August 4th, we'll be celebrating the birthday of Unleashed Blading's game original Integrity Knight and two new skills will be arriving in her birthday banner. First step is a 50% off, step 2 is 1.3% rate for the new Edith skills and step 3 has 2% drop rate for new Edith skills as well as one 4 star guaranteed Edith, not necessarily one of the new ones. Now individually, the Darkness following Sunset Edith is a one-handed sword Axelis skill with wind element. At max limit break it does 1690% damage to a single target with a single hit. Grants a stack of 1% wind damage lasting 20 seconds, can stack up to 3. If you hit with switch it grants another stack of 1% wind damage lasting 20 seconds, this one can stack up to 9. Autumn Leaf Hot Spring Edith is a passive skill, it allows you to do 20% more damage to enemies with slash weakness multiplied by the number of Edith skills you have equipped, so likely a very limited option for you already. 
If you're equipping 4 or more elite skills, you also get a fixed bonus 800 attack. Again, not very enticing due to the general lack of Edith in the game. It's gonna be hard to meet those requirements to get the full benefits. And last but not least, if your HP is below 50%, up to 20% attack bonus at max limit break. And aside from that Edith birthday banner, we also have the Sunshine Goddess Order featuring Asuna, Alice, Koharu and Lizbeth. Step 1 is 50% off, step 3 has 1 4 star guaranteed, step 5 1 of the banner 4 star guaranteed. As for the individual skills, Priestess Gazing at the Sky Asuna is a rapier mod skill with fire element. At max limit break it does 1330% damage to a single enemy in 2 hits, mod bonus is plus 1500 attack against slash type enemies and 120% crit damage boost. Wishing for a good harvest Lizbeth is a club awakening skill with fire element, it does up to 1630% damage to a single enemy in 5 hits, it boosts the attack of the entire party by up to 15% for 15 seconds and it boosts fire damage for your entire party by up to 20% for 5 seconds. Draw and enjoy Koharu is a passive Excella ability. It boosts your max HP by up to 10%, it increases your wind damage by up to 40%, but every other damage decreases by a fixed 50%. It is perfect for wind builds that you may have. And additionally, it increases your switch gauge by up to 15% if you have no UE skill records equipped. Huh? Why does Kohoro hate UE so much? And last but not least, Oracle from the Halo Alice is a one-handed sword mod skill with wind element. It does up to 1430% damage to a single enemy with a single hit. Its mod bonuses are a 50% damage boost when using wind skills and when equipping two or more Yuju skills attack is increased by 1000. That's it for this week's Integral Factor news, please drop a like if you enjoyed and subscribe for more. Remember to check out channel merch and see if you like them and until next week, stay cool.